Hey, how's it going? I wanted to quickly show you how you can make your Drizzle ORM queries as performant as possible. Drizzle on its own is already pretty performant. It's really just like a light layer above the drivers. However, you can make it even better by utilizing prepared statements. Now, to understand why prepared statements improve performance, we first need to understand, you know, what happens behind the scenes when you try to execute a query from something like Drizzle or other ORMs. So you might imagine that your ORM is starting from here with some kind of underlying query builder. Ultimately, that ends up building a SQL query string with potentially some dynamic parameters. Then that SQL string is basically, you know, it's parsed, it's analyzed, and ultimately compiled down to think of it as like a binary executable that the underlying driver then sends to the database to actually execute and then get your data back. Now the thing to understand is that this process effectively happens, you know, every time you're trying to execute SQL using your, your query builder of choice. And in most cases, this is not really a problem. It's not necessarily a performance problem. However, when you have extremely complex queries, like let's say you have a query that's doing, you know, maybe like a ton of joins with uh, various uh, clauses in there, you can probably imagine that this this work to parse and analyze it is, is being repeated every single time, even though the only thing that probably changes with that query is the params. So now imagine if we could take this part of the process and sort of pre-compile it and turn it into something that is already done ahead of time. But still, we need to be able to allow dynamic parameters to come into that. So you can kind of imagine that at a high level, this whole thing can be replaced by prepared statements. And let me show you some examples of how to do that with Drizzle. So I have a simple script here, which basically just connects to a Postgres database. And we're able to create queries off of that. Let's take a look at our schema real quick. We have a, a basic to do's table. And you can see here that we're just doing a, a basic select from select all from to do. Let's go ahead and run our script using npm start. And by the way, if you want to see how I set up this project, uh, you can watch my original first impressions video on Drizzle where I covered exactly how to set this up. But anyways, you can see on the terminal here, we got three items in our to do table. And this is typically how you, you would create queries, right? You would just sort of build it at the time that you need it, right? At the time that we invoke main, that's when the query is created. Now, like I said, we can switch this over to a prepared statement of effectively, we're going to build it ahead of time. So for example, let's do a prepared and basically we want to copy this. And then at the end of it, we're going to add prepare. And for, you can see that there's regs squiggly here because for Postgres, you need to provide some kind of name. So it's like, it's the name of your prepared statement. So let's name it perhaps uh, get to do's. Then at the time that you actually need to call this query, we can just do prepared.execute. And you can see on the right here that we have the exact same result that we did before. So this is a very simple example. Like I said, you're, you're going to benefit the most from this, from like really complex queries, especially from the ones that you tend to execute a lot. But the only thing that probably differs with every execution is the parameters. So for example, let's say that our, our query here is filtering by a specific thing. So let's do perhaps a where clause. So let's say that we're doing some kind of search. Uh, let's do where like we're going to do where to do title is like where the title includes like in it. So, so for example, here, we're now only getting a single to do item instead of the three that we had before. Now we want this to actually be something that's dynamic. Like this piece of the query is something that we want to be able to pass in at the time of execution. So in order to solve that, we actually introduce another function here called placeholder from drizzle ORM, and then we provide it with a name. So let's just call this title. And right now we actually have an error here because it's saying there's no value provided for the placeholder title, which you need to provide in the execute like this. So for example, if we did sub, we should get back the task that says, Hey, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. Um, but anyways, this is really the, the high level gist of it is that, right? So it's almost like the equivalent of something like, uh, you're creating a function ahead of time for a query. And if you're curious about the performance of this, there are actually benchmarks uh, done by the Drizzle team themselves within their repository. So let's take a quick look at the Drizzle Northwind benchmarks here, 
which is done on SQLite. And you can see here that, you know, they have a bunch of tables in here and they do a bunch of example queries. And there's charts here for average queries per second. Uh, and you can see that Drizzle prepared is very high on a lot of these charts. And there is also one specifically for Postgres over here. And you can see that they're pretty honest with the results here, that they're not necessarily always the fastest one in this specific example, but where the queries are actually a little bit more complex. So you can see here for something where you have a select with a where, kind of like what we're, what we're doing, you can see that Drizzle P, which is uh, the prepared version of Drizzle, is almost two times faster than Prisma. Here's another good example where they do a left join with another table you can see that it's over two times faster than Prisma, almost five times faster than TypeORM, which is pretty surprising. I'm not really sure why TypeORM seems to struggle with the joins here. You can see in other examples. But anyways, I'm not going to go over all of these, but you can see that a lot of the times uh, when you utilize in the correct moments, it's a lot faster than a lot of these big guys like Prisma and TypeORM. So this is really where when people say Drizzle is performant and faster, this is really what they're talking about is uh, when you utilize prepared statements, that's when you get the most out of it. Now, does that mean that you should do prepared for all of your queries? Not necessarily. Like I said, you're, you're only really going to notice the benefits, I think, if your query is actually complex enough that if you kept executing that same complex query over and over again, that actually adds up time to the execution of it, right? So if it's something that you can pre-compile, uh, you'll save a lot of time from that. Now there is one cache, so for example here they're talking about uh, serverless environments. So the, basically the gist of it is that I think uh, the prepared statements are only available on a per database session, right? So every time you initiate a new session or a new connection, I guess you sort of lose the pre-compilation that you had before. So in a serverless environment, uh, you can only take advantage of it. For example, here they have a AWS Lambda example. You can only take advantage of it if your connection and your prepared statement is outside of the handler so that it says here it can live up to 15 minutes. So if you have a, uh, let's say you have a Lambda that's making a specific query, uh, like the same exact query, then it can take advantage of that prepared statement as long as it's alive within you know 15 minutes. So if it's like something that's constantly executed, uh, you'll you'll be able to take advantage of this. And then they also mentioned that you know for Edge, uh, it tends to clean up the connection right away. So you probably won't see any benefits there. So that's probably the gotcha that you need to be aware of. Now, however, if you do have a server full uh, application where there's a persistent connection or like a pool of connection, I can see definitely uh, getting a lot of performance out of this. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. I'll see you in the next one.